Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Here we are celebrating all things Valentine's Day um, and we come up with some great projects that we hope you like to share for Valentine's Day. The first one I'm going to talk about is sort of this. So this is um, just a little drape, put a candle inside. We put some of our XL Marini on top but you could just put some frit. So it's a three um, fuse, you're going to full fuse the bottom and then add the heart or frit on as a second fuse and then you're going to third fuse it as a drape. Um, so the first area, when I did this one I actually put a bit too much glass and I ended up cutting it with a tile saw after I'd done the full fuse to sort of give it a bit more um, depth. So I'm going to try this time to put a bit, little bit less glass on and um, see if it works. I also want to make a slightly smaller one. These I also not only make them for you guys to see but also for them to sell in our shop. And it's good to have various ones of different sizes and therefore different prices. Um, so anyone who's done a coral bowl, you're, you're sort of doing exactly the same um, idea as a coral bowl. Just building it up. Um, I just use whatever scrap I've got. I'm using my mosaic nippers to cut it down where it's too big. So there's a couple of different colours here. And then I'm going to put some adventurine. That's the light adventurine. That might be the dark adventurine. This is just a scrap pack I got. So now I've got a basic layer, I'm going to put some, add some stringers to it. Um, they're much thinner, so you do need a bit of a thick glass, otherwise your item will be very delicate. But I found on this piece, the stringers sort of add a really lovely dimension to it, which I liked a lot. Um, The bottom doesn't matter quite so much, it was going to be under, underneath. So we have this new product that will be coming out soon. Um, these are sort of stringers that we've pulled to have kind of buds and we'll do um, spirals as well. Um, this is inspired, I bought AAE's Nancy Weiser's Dream Garden which is fantastic and I thought uh, they're so useful. She shows how to kind of pull these and I pulled them for myself but I thought you guys might like them. Um, so we'll be selling packs of these as well and they're going to kind of just add an extra dimension um, on this um, some of them are quite twisty like that one and you might want to add some gel glue just to hold everything in place and get it to stack up better. You can break these with your hands or you might want to use some mosaic nippers to cut them. So that's probably enough. I think I want to be a bit wary this time of adding too much. I did last time and it ended up a bit too blobby. Um, so yeah I might just cut this one a little bit down and then that will go on a full fuse. These are now fully fused. Um, they're okay, the, the shape of them I'm, I don't think is particularly amazing, but once we put add the next bit, I think they'll be all right. This, we've got a bit of extra kind of long bits here, so I'm gonna put my glasses on and then just cut these bits here. Just to shorten them up a bit, because they're a little bit too long. Um, now I'm going to put them in the kiln and I'm going to put some hearts around the top and maybe some frit and tack fuse that on to make one piece. So the next project we want to look at for this is using the fibre paper casting. Now if you haven't watched the other video I've done on fibre paper, paper casting please do watch that because I'm not going to explain it as in detail as I did then. This is more kind of ideas um, 
to use fibre paper casting to come up with some ideas. So we've already cut out all the designs here. So this one is basically three hearts that is going. It's a sort of sun catcher, which will be three hearts nestled in each other, and so they'll spin independently each one. Um, then we've got three hearts. There's one, two, three here, and they're going to hang one underneath each other. There's another sun catcher. We've got some lopsided hearts here, which will be some sort of necklaces. These, I wanted to do some little heart trays. Now, if you, uh, little heart dishes. Now, the key to this is to find your mould first. Choose your mould and then make sure you're doing your heart to the mould size. So, I want to do these. These are nice because they've got a little slope on them, not too much, but they'll do that. Well, so I literally have made sure that these hearts fit in this mould before I'm um, slump, uh, before I'm making them. We've got a broken heart here. Now, this is going to be like this. It's sort of idea of maybe his and hers you can have um his as a key ring and hers as a, as a necklace and they come together um so that's that idea we try and use up bits so obviously these two are the insides of of these two and we'll just use them as sort of probably um the greetings cards and put all fridge magnets and put them on greetings cards so that's how they'll work so we're going to go ahead and fill these now and we'll show you how they, they look when they're filled but um you know, as I said, look at my fibre casting um, uh, video because I'm not going to go into the details of how to do this on this video. With this heart, this is some hearts that are going to nestle inside each other and then hopefully turn on, um, on an axis so it'll be a sun catcher and each heart will sit inside each other. So then when we were doing cutting the hearts out, we did the first one. You don't exactly want to follow the line with the second one because you end up with a slightly misshapen heart. So each heart is, a, you know, is its own shape and then they'll literally sit inside each other. Another thing you can do is to add wire uh, when making these. We have a drill so we tend to drill things but if you don't have that and you want to add wire a cunning little trick you can do is if you take a piece of wire, this is an acronym wire, and you bend it in half, um, just need to trim it down ever so slightly. And then what you can do is you can just sort of poke it through the fibre paper, like so, and then as long as you make sure you put a piece of glass underneath and then add other pieces of glass on top, that will sandwich nicely and then your metal will be protected in the fibre paper and you know it's going to stay there. The other one I wanted to talk about was this one, which be really careful about filling this into the corners. In our tester one we made we didn't fill this well enough into the corners and you can see you sort of lost a bit of definition. So really pack this into the corners to make sure that it's not going to kind of pull back at the corners trying to be seven um, six millimeters thick. So we finished filling these. Um, we've mostly used our scrap marini We've put a couple of bits of actual proper marini in some of them, and then in um, a couple of them we've used some frit. Um, I've used a mixture of dense white and French vanilla to try and get a reaction, and then what I had left over I put in this one as well. So we'll see how they come out. These are going to go in the kiln a full fuse, and um, firing schedule will be on the uh, underneath in the comments section. So we've grind down all of these. As I said before, you need to check out the other video, and now we're just putting them all in for um, just a fire polish where they've uh, to smooth out the edges where they've been ground. These now, I've put them in, having cleaned them up and got the sort of any residual thin fire off them. Then I just tend to sort of put a bit of gel glue on the ends and just choose. I'm choosing some of these big XL red hearts that we do putting them around and then I'll probably after that I'm going to put some smaller just simple red marini Although I might put the smaller red and red marine in, but I've got a few smaller hearts where I pulled them a little bit thinner um, that I'm going to put on.
and you can put on as many or as few as you like. So I've now added um, the hearts to these and they are ready to go in the tack fuse with everything else. These two hearts are now finished and we're going to think about slumping them. Our original idea was to slump them on these moulds and we'd cut them to fit. But now looking at them, they fit on the mould like that. However, if you look sideways on it, you can see that this height would be quite high, whereas down here wouldn't slump so much. And I don't think it's going to be that attractive a shape. Luckily for me, I have some of um, this adjuster mould from, from that Laurie Spray does. You cut it basically with scissors and then you can shape it to any shape you want. Um, so I'm just have sort of shaped it over a, a baking tray or you could shape it over something like a flower pot to get a bit of a curve on it. And then I can just put the heart in that and then the bottom will slump down and the top will be fine. I will put some fibre paper between this. I know that Laurie has tried this without fibre paper, but it is good. For me, I'm just going to put some one mil fibre paper between this and the mould, just to make sure. Now we need to think about draping these. Um, what you need to work out is what you're going to drape it over. You can use cocktail shakers, these little stainless steel baking dishes are good. And I also uh, drape over little terracotta pots. Uh, you can get quite a few firings out of these just to drape over, they're quite simple ones. Um, you need to put one mil fibre paper between the glass and the mould. I've put this on some kiln post just to raise it up because the glass is a bit longer than the mould. And then just going to pop it on like that. Um, this one... Uh, this is a bit too small for a, um, one of the, ba uh, the stainless steel so I'm just going to use use a little terracotta pot and that's fitting this on here like so putting the fibre paper on top um, as you can see as long as we use stainless steel pins just to hold things in place a little bit they're fine to fire with and can be reused and then I'm just popping this on the top making sure you know using my fingers to make sure it's sort of evenly on top of the mould now the thing you need to think about here is how close this is to the elements. If you're closer to the elements, you'll need to bring your temperature up more slowly. Um, my rate at the moment, I'm bringing the temperature up from uh, my rate at 83 Celsius. That's about 150 Fahrenheit. If you're close to your elements, drop that. Make it as slow as possible. Be safe, otherwise you'll thermal shock your glass. So we also thought we'd do a couple of greetings cards for Valentine's Day. Um, this is really on the same lines as we did the poppy landscapes. Um, I should be wearing a mask, using powders, not so you can hear me. Um, this is spring green opal, putting it at the bottom. I've used, as you can see, a piece of glass and I'm using the wobbly edge at the top to give it the organic feel. A bit of green. Again, if I was being better, I would reclaim the powders. Putting a bit of aventurine, light aventurine green. Give it some texture. And then just sky. I'm using um, turquoise blue. That's like that. Um, now I'm just going to put some stringers on. These are sort of a little bit more like a bouquet of flowers or a plant of flowers than just a sort of random. I like things in threes. I'm a bit obsessed with uneven numbers. I think it. Um, looks better. I'm sure anyone who's done an art degree out there would be able to tell me why.
not, no, that one's a little bit long, but half of that. I'm also going to put a little bit of the sort of smaller stringers at the bottom. It's not quite at the bottom, but it won't too much once I get them all on. Now I want to put a bit of textural items on, so I'm just going to put a bit of, this is um, mint and adventuring green uh, frit from Bullseye that I like and use a lot. I'm just going to put a bit of that at the bottom. And this is some olive green fine as well. And I'm going to add just a couple on each adventuring, light adventuring course. This adds a bit of texture and depth. There we go. Um, and then I want to add some hearts. So I'm going to do three different ones. These are our hearts. got away from me. They're not that easy to pick up with the tweezers. The shape doesn't, doesn't like tweezers. That's one of my fingers. You don't have to just put three on, you could put a few more on. Um, to put. Put on the wrong parts. So like that maybe. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of frit. Um, so on this one I'm going to add a bit of blue frit. Just like that. Um, this one I'm going to add a bit of... Red for it. Mostly I'm using medium. This is a bit of fine. Um, and then this one I'm adding, can I add a bit of pink for it? Um, I'm now going to kind of twist. I prefer, as if you see, this one's got fine and medium, and these two have just got medium. I'm actually going to go and get a piece of me um, fine blue and fine pink to put on these because I think it's going to look better, and then I'll put them on the kiln shelf. Another really easy project and good value one to do for Valentine's Day is stud earrings. We've taken our heart marini and taking them to a low tack fuse of 740, that's 1,365 Fahrenheit, um, just for a hold for 15 minutes, and that just sort of nicely fire polishes them off. And then all you need to do is um, rough up the backs, put a, put a bale on, and they make really lovely stud earrings. With our XL Marine, you could do the same and turn it into a little pendant. Um, and I think these are nice. You could also put these onto something else to make them a little bit more interesting if you wanted to, but I think as a simple gift on their own, they're great and they're incredibly good value. I'd probably sell these for five euros each. That's about six, seven dollars. And if you think how many you get in a pack um, of Marini, you can make a lot of money on those. 
So next is a little project. I certainly didn't come up with this. I'm sure I saw it somewhere first. But it's basically making lots of little squares with hearts on them in various different ways and then using them for different things. Um, so you can put this in a box frame. We'll probably put one in a box frame. Again, you could turn one into um, a keychain. You could turn one into a pendant. Um, so it's the idea of just very simply using two layers of glass to put hearts in. So what I do, I have paper punches. I have just a multitude of these. Every time I see them, I buy them. Um, they have various different ones, various different sizes and hearts. And the different things you can put inside are, uh, this is papers, which are basically your thin fire um, with glass tap paints on top. And you can buy them already done like this. I get them in from warm glass in England. I'm sure places like A do them in the States. Um, and you choose a colour you like. I say I've got rather a lot of colours. I think I've used that one for hearts before. Make sure it's within the heart. Punch it. And then between the two layers of glass, you can put that and you'll end up with a nice heart. So that's with these papers is one way. Then you can also do it with copper. Um, I get my copper and, and silver inclusions from Glass Studio Supplies. Again, links of all these places will be below in the comments section. Um, so copper, copper kind of give, can give you bubbles, which can be really nice. So there's a little copper heart. Put that on that one. And then we have silver foil. Um, I get this for, again from Glass Studio Supplies. Uh, in England um, so I've taken the back off the punch because I really want to be able to see and as soon as I punch through if I try and pull the paper out now it's going to mess up the whole heart so I'm just going to grab it with my tweezers and pull and then I've got the heart out um, and get the piece of paper out and then I can pull all these little bits of silver I've had quite a kind of <laughs> I put those in a cup I put those in a jar and then if I'm doing something with silver inclusions other thing to remember, I'm going to say this now, silver, fire it on a, a separate shelf. Fire it on your silver only shelf. These ones that I'm doing silver on, I'll put on a little, I have a little kiln shelf on its own. They will go on that, otherwise it will contaminate your shelf. And if you're firing various glasses after it, it can leave a mark on your glass. So please remember to do that. So with these, again, I'm just going to sandwich them between a piece of glass like that and you've got a little silver heart I've got another one here slightly different pattern and I'm also going to do um, some with Marini and just put here's one here just put like three little Marini on these are in fact some smaller ones of the Excel Marina I have that I, I've done, um, which is nice. Um, and I'm going to do it's easy to glue it together and it doesn't move around so much. And then I'm going to do one with like one Marini. And these will be, all be full fused. They can go in with this, but I will put the silver ones on a separate kiln shelf. And I'm just going to go through now and make a load up in, with different hearts, different designs. You could do some stenciling. You could do a heart stencil with powders and just um, stencil powders on. It's just doing a mixture of different hearts. You could get some, um, if you've got a, a torus saw, you could cut some heart out. I might cut one out in dichroic and have one dichroic heart. There's lots of different ways you could do it to make lots of different kind of little hearts but similar and it's then you can put it, we'll put it together in a frame um, and it's a really lovely piece to give someone for Valentine's Day. So we've now done these, we've put various different hearts on, we'll do a collection of three to go, um, nine to go in a frame, we've also done a collection of three which is like a daddy, a baby and a mummy for maybe someone with a new baby. Um, this one is actually stacked three high. This is a part sheet um, that I had some white and um, some clear on top, which I'm hoping will be a bit more like a puddle, so maybe a pendant, 
We've got this one, which can be possibly a key ring, and then a couple of spares that occasionally could be, could be pendants. Remember, I'm gonna take these off this kiln shelf and fire them on my little separate silver kiln shelf. I'll take the ones with the metal inclusions and they will go on a separate kiln shelf. So these are out of the kiln now. Um, I've had a look through them and sort of chosen various ones. So I feel that these nine work as a nice composition. And then these three are another nice composition. They can go in frames. We get these um, amount boards and we get them professionally cut from a company that does framing. Um, and I think it's worth the effort to get proper nice thick cardboard to mount my glass on. So do the, um, the mounting to stick these down. I use the two part Araldite crystal clear. I use this for all of my things. I find with this, I don't need to rough the backs. With jewellery you do, with this I don't need to. So I'm going to put a good blob of this, the part one. And then the same equal measure of the second part. I'm just using the lids we use for all kind of, um, when we're cutting up marini so we can have these pots so we can wear it all out and we don't use the lids so we tend to use the lids for mixing and then I use these um I should probably use wooden toothpicks because we are trying to cut down on our plastics here but right now we've already bought a bag of these and um, they say if you have plastics you know already purchased try not to purchase more so I literally mix this for a minute and I'm quite religious about counting for a minute so I'm going to go while I count for this so now it's mixed. Um, I measured these and made sure they're sort of, you know, in the right place. So I'm just going to pick up each one, put you know a decent amount of glue on the back, and put it back down in place. You want to make sure your hands are fairly clean so that you're not getting any glue on the glass. Um, I find it quite good to make sure that I don't put glue right up to the edge of the glass. So it means if I have to move it around at all, you're not going to see any smudges of the glue. If you get any glue on the top, just use some um, rubbing alcohol to get it off. And I'm just going to do that to each one of these and each one of these and place them down. So I've now got the glue on the back and just before it sets properly, I'm really just giving them a little tweak, which is why it's good not to put the glue right to the edge. It's quite hard, you have to kind of get on top of them to see properly. You need to do this on a really flat surface because literally it can be on a tiny, tiny tilt and they will slide. And I've gone and glued something down and then I've walked away and forgotten about it and come back 10 minutes later and the bloody glue stuck and the whole thing slid to one side. And I'm like, and you work really hard on a piece and then you have to rip it off the back of the mount that you paid for and it's just not worth it. So either really make sure you're working on a level surface or just stay with them until the glue goes off properly. Um, so those I think are all alright. So the other ones we've got here are for the um, greetings cards. So I'll make sure I've got no more glue on my fingers. So we've got these lovely greetings cards already done up. I'm just going to fold it in half. So I use the sticky back for the fridge magnets, the sticky back um, magnet. I'm sure you can get it on eBay um, or Amazon. What would we do without Amazon? Um, so you just pull the sticky back off. You've got to quite make sure with these that you put enough magnet on the back for the item. So um, cut them quite big. If you cut them too small, they just fall off. So that can go on like that. Um, so I've got these other ones. I was thinking of making that into a pendant, but actually I think it's going to be really sweet as a greetings card and a magnet. Um, and then the same with these three as well. Um, I then use these, which are branded sellotape. They're sticky fixers, but they're removable, so they go on and off really well. They're quite expensive. They're not the cheapest thing, so I do. you don't need a whole one. Um, depending on the size, you might need a half or a third. But you can put them on, stick them on the back. And... Oh then pull the yellow off and then it's just putting them on the card and centering it up. And then with an envelope they can go in 
the nice cellophane holder. Like so, and always remember your envelope. I've amount of times I've put these all in, sealed them shut, and then gone, bam, where's the envelope? Um, and then seal them shut. And then that will make a really nice card for someone for Valentine's Day. Our final product is this fantastic heart wreath made out of the stringers we pull. Um, it's really simple to do. I think it's incredibly effective to hang up or to give to someone. They're great. We're doing them, we've done them in various different sizes, including a small one that I think could actually be as lovely as a sort of scarf um, uh, holder. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to make them. You basically want to make a simple base to hold the stringers in, well we've done most of ours in clear but I'm also going to do one in pink. Draw, as you can see we've drawn some shapes of hearts on this um, thin fire. Then using some blue gel glue, cut some thin strips of glass and then literally just put them really roughly into the shape of the heart just sticking them down with some blue gel glue to keep them in place. You want to have them overlapping a little bit just to help the whole thing hold together. Now once that's done you want to add some stringers on top. So you're going to take your stringer and you're sort of looking to match it up with the curve. So if I break that one there and break it about there and use a bit of glue. It doesn't need to match up entirely. You can see these ones we've already done. They've got, have got bits sticking out the edges. Um, you may, on thicker pieces, need to use your mosaic cutters and make sure you've got your glasses on them. Your mosaic nippers, I should say. And as you can see, it's a little bit fiddly. You may want a pair of tweezers. It's really worth the effort of doing this because you end up with such a kind of great result. Because look at that, it's such a simple thing, not much material, but so effective. And it's fairly strong now. It's not, you know, you're not going to want to throw it around, but it's strong enough that you can carry on. Now I'm going to carry on filling these up. The other thing I wanted to show just before I carry on doing that is you could also, rather than using clear, you could use a pink. So I'm going to use a petal pink here and then put some of the more purpley stringers on top to give a bit of kind of variation. So you don't just need to use clear, you could also use, if you've got another scrap colour you love, you could also use some really contrasting. I'm going to do another one with really contrasting, so I might use orange on the bottom and blue on the top. So we'll have a look at a couple of different options and see how they come out. And then finally, once you've put all the stringers on, then it's sort of decorating them. You can leave them just simply. This one here, we've decorated, as you can see, with marini hearts. Um, this one we just decorated with a little bit of frit. Um, this one's decorated with some frit balls, and we haven't decided what we're going to do with the other ones yet. So we'll have a think and um, make a decision, and I'm sure they'll all look great. We've now put all the strings on these and decorated them. Um, we've used a couple of frit balls in some of them, and also a little bit of uh, medium coarse frit. So they'll go in on a tack fuse now, and we will see how they come out. So we've now got these out of the kiln. As you can see, as happens in the kiln, um, quite a few of the bits have jumped off. Um, I'm going to delicately lift them up. This has got thin fire on it, and I should be wearing a mask when dealing with thin fire, but I'm going to try not to disturb it. Um, I think this one works quite well. I'm going to do a little bit of wiggling to see whether these are... That's, that's glued on pretty well. So I think that one's probably right. You may want to do this. So you see, I'm just pulling breaking off the kind of more delicate stringers on it. Um, and so that one's good. I would say that that one's probably okay as well, if I break those off. Although, I don't know, I think it's a little bit light on stringers. 
So I think I may well put this one back in the kiln and add a few extra stringers to it to give it a little bit more meat, um, for want of a better expression. So I'm going to go through them. This one, loads of the, the hearts have, have jumped off. Um, I will probably, rather than reuse these because they'll lose their shape even more on a second firing, I think I'll probably just put some um, more hearts. I might even put a bit of frit on this one. This one's lost quite a lot of these um, dots we put on, so do the same. And we're just going to go through each one and decide, has it got enough on it? You might need to do a second firing. The first one we did work perfectly. We didn't need to do a second firing. I think some of these need a bit more extra work. This one's kind of, um, it slid apart a bit. So I, I think just to make it nicer, it's worth the second firing just to give it, to make it perfect. So with these, I'll take them off, clean off the kiln shelf. And then the ones I feel that need a bit more, I'm going to put back in for uh, another firing with a little bit extra on. Also on here, I'm going to actually put this one back in. Um, quite a few of the hearts sort of fell off. Um, uh, and oh, so it's attached. And so I just wanted to put a few more on. You can see this one came out really nicely. So I'll hold this, I'll hold off putting this into drape until this one comes out. Um, you may not get to see those fully draped on the video because we're going to run out of time in the kilns. With these um, ones, we are also going to, sorry, getting a pair of glasses. Where there's a lot of clear up here and the shapes are a bit bad, you can always take mosaic clippers to them and just sort of cut bits off. Um, this second fuse, if you take your time on the first fuse and kind of, we did, you know, we did quite a lot and we did them quite quickly, but if you take your time and perhaps let glue dry in between layers, you're going to end up with probably a better result um, after the first one. There's also, you could do the stringers and then put the decoration on in two different fusings, might be another way to do it, to get a, a, a sort of better result. The other thing I'm doing kind of here is, with this one, we had the pink at the bottom and then we had the kind of um, mauve stringers and now I'm putting white strings on the top and I'm also putting a bit of near lavender. I think everything looks better with near lavender. Um, coarse frit and just, I sort of do this blob on the, blob of gel on the, on the paper and then just using tweezers to place this on. You know, once you've done a bit, maybe walk away, have a think, is that okay? Come back, have a look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. I still don't like this one very much. Not quite sure how to make it look better, but yeah, you'll always have some that you really love. I love this one and this, and this one I'm not so keen on. So here we have all our finished items. Uh, we have our wreaths. They're nice if you finish them off with a bow and then they can hang in the window. Um, I have lots of kind of boxes full of different types of ribbon, but you literally just hook the ribbon through like that and then they can hang them up. They could also be bits of jewellery um, if you wanted. They could be kind of the smaller one, could be a necklace or a pin or even kind of some kind of scarf tie. Um, we have in the frames, I think these work really well now they've been put in their frames. Um, the ones, the spare ones we've turned into sort of greetings cards and then this bigger one I will put, um, I've drilled and we'll put a ring on and turn it into a key ring. Um, we've got the smaller hearts here, which probably might be more um, fridge magnet cards. Um, these three turn out really well. I think they're beautiful. Um, the sort of wonky hearts. I think that they'd be quite nice sort of hanging on a thong as a necklace. Um, alternatively, you could kind of make a pin and turn them into a sort of scarf or a, a, you know, a pin, which would be nice too. Um, the broken in two hearts are really good. We've drilled them again. And so we can put a, um, a key ring maybe on one and turn the other one into a necklace. And um, then these hanging hearts are really pretty. We've just sort of tied them up with chicken wire. I've done it quite kind of quickly just to get them ready to show you in the video. Um, you can also drill them and hang them differently. And then this is a sort of nesting heart. Quite nice as a sort of wind chime. 
Um, we have the draped heart bowls. This one, this is why you should always check your kiln when you're draping. I couldn't, I had to go home. Um, and it's not draped as well as I'd like. I will put this back in and drape it again to try and get this bit to come down. Um, so yeah, check your kilns, open your kilns, don't be afraid to. When you're doing things like slumping and draping and you can see how it's going. Um, that was the one I sort of had pre-made before and I prefer the shape on it, but they're both still really pretty. With these, I want to say we've used the, my Heart Marini. Now I know some of you can't afford to buy Heart Marini. There's quite a lot of Heart Marini on there. You could also, if you have a torus or make your own hearts, or I know I've seen lots of fantastic um, uh, tutorials out there showing with kind of a, a rectangle and a square how you can fuse together a heart. So you could just make lots of those and, and do, um, do them instead. So there are other options. You don't have to kind of buy the Heart Marini to do that. Then lastly, we've got these, um, not quite lastly, we've, but we've done these little plates that we slumped. Um, these are ones we sort of made before. And this one's, uh, we actually draped these and this one draped a bit incorrectly. And these ones we slumped on the adjuster mold. Again, I think they should have gone a little bit hotter for a little bit longer. Um, and I might put them back in and slump them a bit more. And then lastly, we just have the greetings cards. A little fridge magnet, which is a cute, nice present. So I hope you've enjoyed this YouTube video, and if you have, please subscribe.